you for watching Let the Prophet Speak. I've absolutely enjoyed coming into your homes and spending time with you. I hope it has been a great experience for you because it has been an awesome experience for me. I need to ask you a favor. If you have enjoyed Let the Prophet Speak, if you've been educated, trained, if it has enhanced your life, if you've learned something about your giftings, I need to know it. If you watch me on my YouTube channel, I need you to send me an email, contact me by Facebook, um, Twitter. Let me know that you're benefiting from Let the Prophet Speak. It is a training tool uh, to help any person that's flowing in the gifts or have the ascension gift calling or the grace gifts. I want to empower and enhance your life, show you how to take it to the marketplace, make it very relevant. But I need your financial support to remain on the air. It costs an average of $750 per month to air Let the Prophet Speak in Panama City, Florida, as well as Tallahassee, Florida. For many of you, that may not seem like a large amount of money, but the cost of running that broadcast from month to month, uh, year to year, can be overwhelming with all of the other expenses that we uh, incur while we're producing books and giving away cruises and trips to cancer, people that are fighting cancer, or single mothers buying clothes for the kids to go back to school, uh, giving away cars and scholarships to college students. So we appreciate any amount that you can give, from $5 to $500. We will appreciate your love offering. Once again, thank you for watching Let the Prophets Be. I love you more than words can possibly say. Appreciate the viewers, and I would just like to know who you are. I'm waiting to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Let the prophet speak. God can do anything more than we can ask or think, more than we can imagine in our wildest dreams. Thank you, Lord, by your blood I have been redeemed and in your mercy you kept me. Luke, the 17th chapter, the third through the fourth verse. Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter, fourth, 17th chapter, third through the fourth verse. A little background for the youth, those that aren't Bible scholars. Luke was a physician. I love the fact that he was included in the Gospels. And Luke, the third verse says, take heed to yourself. Pay attention to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, Rebuke him. I like that part. I get to tell you off. <laughs> and if he repents, forgive him. You say, how can, you got to forgive. Get it out of your system, but you got to once they say, I'm sorry. And I know, I know I'm going to answer your other question that's in your mind. Fourth verse. And if he trespass against these seven times, what if he do it again? Seven times in a day. And turn again to you and say, I repent. Thou shalt forgive them. Come on, some of you have an attitude already. Now, wait a minute. Mm -mm. But it's the Bible. Say, it's the Bible. You have to forgive. To trespass means to wound or mar. Have you ever been wounded by someone? Marred by them. Daryl Strawberry's father wounded him. Marred him. So he trespassed against him. But look at how many people Daryl Strawberry trespassed against by stealing their money and spending it on dope. When you trespass against someone and wound them or vice versa, you literally mar them or leave a mark or a bruise on them. 
You leave a mark or a bruise. Some of you may not have marks or bruises. I have a mark on my wrist where I jumped over a barbed wire fence at 10 years old. And I can still look at the mark. And every time I look at the mark, I can remember the incident, but I don't remember the pain. That's the way it's supposed to be with trespasses. I remember the incident, but he took the pain out. Jesus took the pain out. Because of the blood, because of the cross, because of crucifixion, he took the pain out. You marred me, you wounded me, but I don't feel the pain of it anymore. I just have proof that I overcame it. Anybody with me? It hurt them so badly... And this is a person that's been trespassed against, has been wounded or marred. It hurt them so badly and penetrates so deeply, they'll remember it for the rest of their life. Now, this happened when I'm ten, I was 10. I'm 63. You do the math. It's 53 years ago. There are certain things that hurt you so badly, but you need to let the power of the word and the power of the blood take the pain out. A verbal trespass is a lethal thing. Words, so that lie, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. The words are more lethal than a physical wound. Words will penetrate that womb and go into the stomach, and words that were spoken to you when you were in your mother's womb will still affect you. If that mother said, I don't want a boy, and you ended up being a boy, those words you struggle with being a boy the rest of your life based on words that were spoken when you were on the inside. I don't want to be pregnant. So you struggle with staying alive. You struggle with spirits of suicide where you need deliverance because you feel like I wasn't, I'm not supposed to be here. And you don't know it's because of words that were spoken saying, Lord, don't let me be pregnant. Lord, I don't want to have a child. Lord, I don't want the responsibility. Responsibility. So you fight over the rest of your life feeling like you don't belong here. Those words. Unless you rescind them, retract them. God, forgive me. Now that I look at this baby, forgive me for not wanting to be pregnant. I love this child. Thank you so much. Do not let these words cancel their destiny. Do not let them affect them. How do you change it? You tell that child, I said this because I was young. I was foolish. But you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I thank God for you. I may have been raped, but thank God I didn't abort you. Thank God I didn't have a miscarriage because the only good thing that came out of the rape, baby, is you. Christians will continue to hold on to the wounds caused by trespasses so they can nurse them. You notice I said Christians, not sinners. What's wrong with that picture? Christians are supposed to be redeemed, Christ-like, forgiving, handing out forgiveness like you're handing out Tic Tacs or candy. But Christians are prone to hold on to it and nurse it because they feel if I forgive, you might do it again. So I can't let you off the hook. So you're basically saying, I don't trust God to get them. I don't trust Jesus to handle it. He shed his blood, but I'm crucifying him again. I know you didn't realize you were saying that. That's why I'm throwing it out there. Then they'll relive, their, they'll suppress the hurt until something happens that triggers the memory of pain. And when something else happens that triggers the memory, they've been married. Their first husband cheated on them. They got married again. And the way their first husband cheated on them was with their ex-wife. So when the second husband goes to visit his ex-wife, you come back. He comes back and you've cut up the couch. You pour drain on all his suits. You've set his car on fire like waiting to exhale. From suppressed pain, suppressed hurt. Because it triggered a memory of pain that you didn't deal with. Could it be that he was a scoundrel and you should have got out of that long time ago? Thank God and Greyhound, he's gone. I know that's a song. Just thank God you're over that person. Reframe. Why punish the next person for what the first person did? Hey, half the time they don't even know the first person. 
Have you ever considered they didn't compare notes? Okay. They suppress the hurt until, the, ha, until something happens that triggers the memory of pain. Then they'll relive the experience all over again. Have you ever been in an argument with somebody and they said, you know, the last person did this and you're not going to be doing this to me because I'm just not going to have anybody. And you're standing there saying, who was the last person? What happened? <laughs> anybody ever been on the blunt of that and received that? You wonder, what is happening? How many of you have ever buried someone that you love? Journey on. How many of you have ever gone through heartbreak? Journey on. How many of you have ever experienced an unwanted divorce? Journey on. How many of you have ever lost a dream? What you dreamed of doing all your life? Journey on. How many of you have ever lost a home through bankruptcy, foreclosure, but whatever reason? I say to you, journey on. How many of you have ever lost a job? Either you were laid off or fired. Journey on. Yes. Having to reinvent yourself. Yes. Yes. Menopause made me reinvent myself. Yes. Having children made me reinvent myself. Yes. Getting married, I had to reinvent myself. Yes. When I stopped teaching and went into full-time <coughs> ministry, I had to reinvent yes. myself. Yes. So life is filled with swift, tra swift transitions. It's filled with change. So we have to reinvent ourselves and journey on. Journey On has been released and is receiving rave reviews from professionals across several fields. Judge Hubert Grimes says, Dr. Vernette Rozier uses her own life story to not only testify of the multiple seasons of pain in her life, but uses her experiences to bring hope and deliverance to the reader who may have had or is experiencing similar issues. Therapist Winona Allen says, as a counselor, I was ecstatic about the clinical research and the high intensity of grief work being done in this book, Journey On. Dr. Dolores Peace says, Dr. Rozier helps us to understand our humanity and the need to address what happens to us as individuals when we grieve. Don't avoid pain. Do the grief work and use this book to help you do the work necessary to grieve in a healthy manner. To place your order, visit our website, thywrozier.org, or you can contact us via phone at 810 Dream 08. Holding on to these trespasses is the root of bitterness. Hebrews 12, 15. Hebrews 12, 15. If you hold on to it, what does Hebrews 12, 15 say? It says it will spring up and defile you. Why hold on to something that will spring up and defile you? What you don't address. What did you contribute to the last bad relationship? Take responsibility, ownership. You knew he wasn't all that in a bag of chips. You knew she wasn't all that in a bag of chips. You tell yourself the truth. You were desperate, and this is what you ended up with. See, healing comes from truth. The truth that you know, that you intercourse with, that you're intimate with. The truth that you know will set you free. If you're intimate with it, become one with it. This is the truth. I was in a race with my girlfriend to see who would get married first. And this is what I ended up with. That's somebody's truth. Looking diligently, least any man fail of the grace of God, least any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Isn't it a dreadful thing to defile yourself? Because of a wound, because of a mar, because of a trespass that was committed against you, and you kept harboring that. I don't like any woman. I used to see this all the time when I um, first started pastoring, and thank God I weeded that out. Uh, I would have individuals come up and say, you know what? I had a terrible relationship with my mother, so therefore I don't think I'm going to like you. I was young and inexperienced, and I thought as a Christian you had to take that. Now I have a comeback. How do you know I like you? <laughs> now, how does that feel? 
While they're telling their truth, I'm telling my truth. How do you really know I want to be close to you? See, I have this motto, you reap what you sow, and no longer do I let you wound me and don't have a comment and take it home and harbor it so it eats at my insides. When you finish sharing your truth, I share my truth. Well, you know, the last day I would have individuals say, my mother and I had a bad relationship, so therefore I feel I have a bad relationship with you, but I had a good relationship with my daddy, so therefore I like Pastor Rosa. Can you help me to like you? That's okay. And I would go home and cry, and then the new improved me after God delivered me from me. I would say, no, I'm not going to help you like me, and this is what I'm going to do. If you bake a cake just for him, I'm going to throw it in the garbage, or either the children are going to eat the whole thing and don't give him any. <laughs> It prevents a root of bitterness. Some issues are not your issues. There are things people have not dealt with. I don't trust any woman. But they never tell you why. I just don't trust any woman. I'm sorry, I can't trust you. And it's always a root there. Because your girlfriend slept with your man. And now I don't want you are your man. But you got a problem. Are we keeping it real? If you find the root, you can change the fruit. Why is it you're more comfortable with men than women? Because you're Jezebel, and you can flirt, and they won't catch it, and women will catch you in your mess and address it. True. The reason I'm more comfortable with men, I can flirt, and they'll enjoy it, and they won't say anything about it. And women will say, what is your little hot problem? You know, we get with each other. Okay, but let me cover this. I am not for women fighting each other over a man or over a woman. You need to address the person you have covenant with. Oh, good. And I'm adamant about it. Don't come running up in my face over your little piece of man. By the time I finish, you may not even want him either when I get through talking about him. <laughs> Jacob, in Genesis, the 37th chapter, commanded his son Joseph to forgive his brothers for the trespasses they had committed against him. Jacob, who later became Israel, commanded his son Joseph. Joseph had every right to be angry, bitter, resentful. Sure, you may have every right to be angry, bitter, or resentful, but you gave up that right when you were redeemed, regened, when you've been bought with a price, when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, you gave up that right to hold that person hostage. Per adventure, you do something in the future and you need his forgiveness. If you won't do it for the person, do it for yourself. Joseph had every right, but his father commanded him, forgive your brothers for the trespasses they had committed against him. Although his brother's actions severely wounded Joseph, he chose to forgive them. Now, that's re you're really being wounded when your own brothers drop you in a well, a dry well. Snakes could eat you. Mountain lions jump in there and eat you. All kind of predators. When they make your brother, your father feel that you're dead. Out of jealousy. You didn't do anything to them except share the dream. You did nothing to them. But your father just loved you because you're the child of his old age. Have you ever had people dislike you just because you were loved? Just because somebody loved you, they're threatened. They're fighting you. You didn't do anything. They're threatened by the fact that you have something that I'm not getting. It wasn't that Israel did not love his other sons. He was just a child of his old age that he had by the woman that he loved, Rachel, that he worked years for. And you have children that are middle, middle, uh, that middle child syndrome. Or that black sheep syndrome where they just feel like my mother has too many or she didn't want me. So you're fighting with your siblings because you're threatened by what your parents or how your parents feel about them rather than seeing yourself as an individual. What's wrong with you? How many of you have ever buried someone that you love? Turn me on. How many of you have ever gone through heartbreak? Turn me on. 
How many of you have ever experienced an unwanted divorce? Journey on. How many of you have ever lost a dream? What you dreamed of doing all your life? Journey on. How many of you have ever lost a home through bankruptcy, foreclosure, but whatever reason? I say to you, journey on. How many of you have ever lost a job? Either you were laid off or fired. Reinvent yourself. Yes, yes. Menopause made me reinvent myself. Yes. Having children made me reinvent myself. Yes. Getting married, I had to reinvent myself. Yes. When I stopped teaching and went into full time <coughs> ministry, I had to reinvent yes. myself. Uh -huh. So life is filled with swift, trans swift transitions, yes. it's filled with change. So we have to reinvent ourselves and Journey on. Journey, on. Journey on has been released and is receiving rave reviews from professionals across several fields. Judge Hubert Grimes says Dr. Vernette Rozier uses her own life story to not only testify of the multiple seasons of pain in her life, but uses her experiences to bring hope and deliverance to the reader who may have had or is experiencing similar issues. Therapist Winona Allen says, as a counselor, I was ecstatic about the clinical research and the high intensity of grief work being done in this book, Journey On. Dr. Dolores Peace says, Dr. Rosier helps us to understand our humanity and the need to address what happens to us as individuals when we grieve. Don't avoid pain. Do the grief work and use this book to help you do the work necessary to grieve in a healthy manner. To place your order, visit our website, thyrosier.org, or you can contact us via phone at 810-DREAM-08. Israel, his father, said to him, forgive your brothers. And how do we know Joseph did it? Because God set him up and put him in a position for such a time as this. Joseph said, what you meant for my hurt, God turned that thing around for my good. You meant to do me in. But God really used you to cause that dream to be fulfilled. How much of your life happened a certain way because God was setting you up for that dream to be fulfilled? I'm sure Lindsay had no idea coming to Panama City, taking a job playing on the keyboard would have him married to Martha. Don't act like you were so deep and you knew it. Uh-uh. <laughs> you had no idea your heartbreak will have you married to Charlotte. What you've gone through, God set you up to be where you are. So what you're grieving over, if the other thing had worked out, you wouldn't be in Bay County. I remember Renee telling Andy, I want to move to Bay County, and I happened to be standing there, and Andy said, Andy said, I'm not moving to Bay County. Where do you live now, Renee? <laughs> God always has a plan. It may not work out the way you think it should work out, but you've got to learn how to put yourself in his hands and not be hung up on they rejected me. One person's rejection is another opportunity, a door that's going to open for you. Could it be that God was working behind the scenes to get them to reject him? I remember that book of Bay. I hope she's watching. No, I hope she's not watching. That was dating Joe Young. And they came to visit me in Panama City. And they were all dressed up. And I noticed they were dressed alike. And Joan A. didn't even notice they were dressed alike. And I said, oh, no, she's trying to mark her territory. And here's a little thought I had in my mind. I said, you know, growing up, my grandmother used to say dogs would pee on things to mark their territory. And I said, no, not the case. But just, I'm quoting my grandmother. Anytime I can throw grandmother in there. But immediately I started praying, go on, get on away from here. And it's like, God sent her to somebody. She's somebody's child. She had no idea when I was hugging her coming in, I was saying, send her to whoever she belonged to, God. <laughs> she can't be in this family. When they were getting ready to leave, I was hugging her again. God, send her to whoever she belonged to. She can't be in this family. We're not going to be able to do it, God. Save us. But if he had hooked up with her, he wouldn't be married to his destiny. He didn't think heartbreak was a good thing at that time. 
But thank God for heartbreak because heartbreak brought him the promise. There are some things that broke your heart, but it led you in the direction so that God could set you up so that the will of God would be fulfilled in your life. What is it that you have gone through? It made no sense. It made no sense to me that I would bury both of my parents by the time I'm 10 years of age. But thank God for wonderful grandparents, those sweet arms. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for John and Beatrice Sweet. What the enemy meant for your hurt, God has turned that thing around for your good. You need to celebrate, reframe, and look at every rejection as a stepping stone that's taking you to the next level. Had you not been rejected, you wouldn't be where you are today. He could have left you in that mess. Regardless of how great the trespass. Well, let me back up. If you are carrying wounds from trespasses committed against you or that you have committed against others, this is your opportunity to release the guilt and pain and be set free. Let it go. Tell your neighbor, let it go. It's destroying you. Let it go. Regardless of how great the trespass, you can be set free of the wound because of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Let it go. You're hindering yourself. You only give power to it. The more you rehearse it, the more alive it becomes. You notice the more you talk about it, your breathing change, you go into a panic attack, you get angry again, you start walking the floor, you feel like breaking something, your whole emotions change, let it go. Stop rehearsing the negative and rehearse the positive. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, had they not given me up, I wouldn't have been adopted, wouldn't have been in the right family, and I wouldn't be headed in the direction I'm going in. Had my father not disowned me, I would not be successful. Thank God for him disowning me. Had I not lost this job, I wouldn't have started my own business. Thank God that I lost this job. Everything that you've gone through, look at it as a stepping stone. God allowed this because he was building greatness down on the inside of me. Stand to your feet and lift those hands and say, God, I thank you for every trespass, for all the rejections. Had I not gone through it, I would not have maximized my potential. My future's great because I'm not harboring or hovering over those wounds and places that I've been marred. I release it now in the name of Jesus. Even those people that wounded me so badly that the wound is visible. Lord, I give you permission to take the toxin out. Take the pain out. Leave the memory of the scar so that I can declare here's my proof of the victory. In Jesus' name, amen.